First thing you have Rebecca Tansley. She comes to us from the film world. Rebecca's role as the producer of filmed coverage of opera and dance has made her the go to person for this type of production. She brings together a very experienced crew to capture the performance in its original and pure form. Simon Garrett has had his experience over the years of lighting live audience shows that have been covered for TV release, has seen him achieve high quality captures of the original production. This takes a particular skill of working lighting and production together to achieve the best outcome for the live and TV audiences. Finally, Chris McKenzie, who has spent over 40 years lighting for film and television. In his time, he has lit shows across from live audience to TV or film. He has successfully worked with his theatre colleagues to realise the original look at the stage shows onto the 2D medium on the screen. So I'm going to hand over to them to share their insights. Um, Kia ora koutou, everybody. Um, I thought I would, as a filmmaker, show a film clip, uh, which is uh, by way of introduction for Roland. This is from the uh, Royal New Zealand Ballet, if you don't guess. To create harmony, you know, you all have to have the same understanding of the functions of a waka. And I don't necessarily think that is where the waka is at at the moment. We're sort of trying to help without um, causing too much friction as our canoe plows through the waves, if you know what I mean. It does stay on the earth, try to be down to, to, to the earth. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Cool. We haven't actually met as a, as, a, as a group team, the artistic director, the choreographers, and the designers. We haven't actually had a single meeting together. I'm not the kaihoto of this waka. I'm not, I'm not driving this waka. The Royal New Zealand Ballet is driving this, this waka. I think we need to actually come together so that we can all move together. Um, I chose that clip because uh, it's one of my favourites from the film Heart Dances, which follows the production of um, the, the ballet uh, based on the film The Piano. Uh, but then when I was watching it again now, I was thinking that the, the analogy of a waka is actually quite helpful for what we're talking about because um, uh, when you've got a live production um, and everybody's focused on uh, bringing it together for the live show, that's like a walker and it knows what it's doing and it's going in one direction um, and everybody knows which way they're supposed to row. Um, but then when you bring in um, a filming or broadcast element, then all of a sudden you can quite possibly come up with conflicting um, demands and constraints and construction and, um, and yeah, uh, implications of that can be quite, quite complicated. Um, and I, I guess the other thing that this clip raises, which I quite like talking about, is that um, while a lot of what we are talking about is um, filming for either live streaming or live broadcast, um, or to show just a complete live production, um, it's quite possible that there will be other elements of production that get filmed um, in the type of work that I do. Um, as you can see, I, I have done rehearsals as well and that kind of thing. So there are all sorts of potential implications for live productions when a film crew puts up their hand for whatever reason and says, hey, we really love to film you. Um, a couple of things about my background. 
I sort of fell into filming live performances when I decided to make a feature documentary about um, a classical pianist who, um, who went back to Italy and performed with a live orchestra for the first time. And so now, um, as we had said, this is kind of um, my thing. Um, I made this film um, about the Royal New Zealand Ballet's production of the piano, and I last year filmed um, a live production of New Zealand Opera's Simile um, in the Holy Trinity Cathedral. And I'm going to talk mainly about that in a moment. Um, but the, the planning and preparation for filming of the live show is, is all about that, as you guys will know. So it's all about the planning and the preparation. Um, and what the plans and preparations are depends entirely on what it's for, what, what the budget is, of course, that's the big kahuna, um, and how it's going to be seen, where it's going to be seen. Um, and in my case, often it's not just about the live show, it's about other elements um, as well so that I can tell. Mm -hmm. Are you looking for a better multi-channel um, intercom system, wired and wireless? Do you want to get rid of the heavy, complicated, and expensive matrix? Let's discover the Green Go communication system. Up to 3,000 users and 250 groups can be connected in full duplex within the Ethernet network. Why Green Go? Green Go uses any existing networks without any special wiring needed. Your matrix is in the processor of each single device. No master station, no central external matrix. Its free configuration um, software will allow you to create the user and the groups needed. Shows, Your investment will be linear. At any time, you can add on new devices. Um, you pay just for the extra ones. Very low latency. Amazing digital about. sound quality. So, um, no hum and noise anymore. Private talk. Um, Group talk um, flexibility. Easy. Um, All POE. Um, How to set it up. Um, just connect the units to an Ethernet network and start talking using the default configuration setup. Of course, our free editing software will allow you to create your own configuration. Interfaces to third-party systems will allow to link your existing comms or analog audio in and out signals from your simple analog party line system to the WWW network. Ringo, we need to talk. Was producing a show last year and yeah, yeah, I know, you heard it. Sorry, your venue is too small for lights with all the bells and whistles. Well, we've got a little something for you. Solar Frame 750. This LED fixture pumps out bucket loads of lumens without burning lamp hours, ever. Ultra bright indeed. Solar Frame 750 has more than enough light to fill your entire space with a mahoosive 6 to 50 degree zoom. We can fit every corner. Did someone say corner? Framing shutters. Oh yes, framing shutters. They'll do squares, rectangles, quadrangles, triangles, sharp angles, and full sweeps. Oh, you want more? CMY mixing, yes. CTO, yes. Color wheel, yes. Prism, yes. Rotating uh, gobos. Well, that's a yes. So Iris, mean, yes. Uh, Frost, yes. Sharks that, uh, with laser beam mode, uh, yes. Oh, I, I mean, no. But lens defogger, yes. Yeah, this light was designed for you. This light was built for you. Treat your theater, studio, worship space, trade show, event space, whatever space, the way you want. Nay, deserve to be treated. Solar frame 750.
side of the stage area um, and that was a bit of a challenge to figure out how to film that. Of course we also have a live audience to continue with in all the seating um, and so what uh, we did uh, was watch the rehearsals partly which we did on Zoom because of um, lockdown restrictions and um, to like, figure out what was happening where and then plan the uh, camera positions accordingly. So the camera positions, um, which I did with Simon Raby, I should say, it's not all my work by any means, um, Simon Raby, DP um, extraordinaire. And the wee orange um, dots are where we decided to put cameras. Um, two gentlemen sitting beside me know a lot more about lighting than I do. Um, and um, everybody who's been involved in filming also know that um, DPs like to control the lighting. Um, but in a live show, um, you have to go pretty much with the lighting of the live show. And that was the case in this. You can tell from the trailer, it's pretty um, distinctive lighting. This is the venue that we were talking about. And um, this is from Simon's slides. So it's actually some technical information. The, the other thing that um, actually impacted on filming was the fact that um, when they delayed the, um, the performances because of the COVID lockdown, um, actually it meant that the sun was setting later. And so it wasn't like being in a theatre where you have 100% blackout and just the lighting could continue. It actually was daylight to continue with as well because there are a lot of windows in that cathedral. Um, so that was, that was interesting. Um, and from a continuity point, if you're filming more than one performance and wanting to edit stuff in as well, made a difference. Um, you can see the height involved, um, and you will have seen in the trailer that um, uh, we got above a camera above the bed. There was a lot of bed action in this opera, um, funnily enough. And so we, I knew I wanted to get the camera above the bed. And so this is a, um, a shot of the, uh, I don't even know what you call those, lighting hatches in the ceiling of the cathedral. So Simon's solution, because we couldn't hang, we couldn't hang anything directly above the bed because there was a massive screen there um, for the opera itself. So we took out one of these lights from one of these hatches um, and we, to get there, we could go through, up a ladder through that concrete hole. Um, with a rig that looked like that. Um, and then that was a remotely operated rig that we, not me, um, the wonderful uh, team managed to hang out the window. So um, that's an example of how we looked at the production, we looked at what the blocking was, we looked at what the staging was, and we figured out what is the best way to tell that story and actually offer a view of the performance that the audience sitting in, in the venue can't actually get. That was something that I was um, quite sure that I wanted to do because often with, um, with stage performances, obviously you think about an audience in the, in the seating, but if you can offer, this is one of the beauties of filming a show, is you can actually offer angles that you can't, Necessarily, get in the live show. 
Um, but obviously, if you're going to hang a reasonably heavy piece of equipment out of a hatch in the ceiling, which is about 30 meters high, through a tiny port, through a tiny <laughs> port, it raises like health and safety issues. Um, and and everybody who's listening, I'm sure, will know that even bringing in a film crew into a live production raises a whole lot of health and safety issues. You've got to be mindful of all the production, live production health and safety. Um, issues as well as your own uh, film production issues. Um, so I feel like I've talked long enough and, and I should open it up to you guys, but um, yeah. Pretty hard act to follow. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Not I, think, I think this is a really good intro to where we're going to go with the rest of it actually, because this is sort of setting the, uh, the canvas of what we're trying to achieve really. Um, whereas I've gone back into the technical one of mine, so um, yeah, uh, it's a fabulous looking show. I, I thought, yeah, and that is a very difficult venue, like, yeah, of all the venues in town, like those ports are you know, nightmarishly short, they uh, small, and um, yeah, daylight, it's a name, it's audience under everything, yeah, yeah, and actually, so, I didn't even talk about the audio picture. Um, oh, yeah, which obviously for opera is um, is massively important. Yeah. Um, and again, in a in a non theatre setting, was more difficult. Obviously. Yeah. The thing you're doing though, um, we would normally direct the audience with lighting, and you're doing it with your cutting, which is yeah. why these yeah. specific shots have been, you know, and and that's a big advantage if if it's really well illustrated. Yeah, I was going to say that's one of the key things that, that the theatre practitioners need to understand that the, the theatre production is always a wide shot. Mm. And so you need to drive your audience's attention to specifics that you want them to see um, with lighting or with other physical cues, whereas in a, in a television or film production, that uh, attention on a certain point is done by a camera shot going closer. And this is where some of the lighting is that we saw uh, can, can be very difficult because it is set up for a wide shot. Mm. And as Simon said, it may well be brighter in that area to draw your attention. But in fact, if you've taken the camera in closer on that area, you have no idea that the rest of the area is dark. And that is the, the, the point. Um, and the, the fact that, you know, a lot of the times that the really as a, as a film or television production are guests on somebody else's production, that we have to tread a fine line and, and, and particularly what Rebecca's done there, being almost a fly on the wall without interfering with um, the production's intent. But also to be able to, if you have the time and the budget, to have a talk to the lighting people, have a talk to production stage management about things that you need to alter slightly. If you do need to alter a little bit of staging to make a camera shot work better because you can't repo a camera or you don't have an extra camera to grab a close up that you really need. So that there are the whole thing of being. As I said, I think guest is probably the best word that, that you know, you're there at the, uh, the tolerance of the, the production and to work with it. Um, I think relationships, we've talked about this before, Chris, um, relationships are really important. Yeah. I mean, I, I believe that's what filmmaking is about and yeah. it's the same with live shows. It's just, just, it's key to yeah. building, building yeah. the relationships. Yeah. Yeah, and, and we can go in and be demanding of, of, of real estate in a room as well. And, and old and school television. <laughs> well, yeah, there's, there, there are two schools. There's, mm. the, there's the old school where you turn up with a, with a 50 foot trailer and a, a million miles of cable and, mm. and large cameras and large pieces of iron mongery to, to throw those cameras around. Uh, or you turn up with you know what the BBC call a PCU, which is a you know two people and a camera, and all you need is room for a tripod and a focus puller, mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully you can shoot it. So there's those two media works, two means of achieving uh, your your 
finished product of the coverage of a live event, which we've all always got to remember. If you're very, very lucky, you get to take the show over for a couple of times and actually turn it into the into the TV or film show that you want. But that those those opportunities these days are few and far between. Uh, you know, we see productions from the Met, we see Royal Shakespeare, you know, turning up in cinemas and it would be amazing to have access that those guys had of, of you know, three camera <laughs> and, 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 you know, the ability to take over a show yeah. for a week after it's, uh, it's run, but we uh, in this country unfortunately don't, so we tend to, tend to become the guest, sneak in, shoot it, get out. Make it look international. Make it look international. Yeah. Make it look like a million bucks. Yeah. Oh, totally. And, you know that's that's why we have so much production coming in here because we we can do it. But um, yeah, occasionally we want to increase light levels, uh, and again, that's something that can be done with the luxury of, of pre prod and a rehearsal day. Maybe where you can do it with television. Person can get with the, or the DP can get with the original lighting designer and say, hey, can we have a bit more backlight, bit more edge light, bit more whatever on that? Not often. We get that opportunity. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Um, I think yeah, it would be great if there were those opportunities. And and similarly, now, for example, there wasn't. But um, yeah, it's totally, it would have been, it would have been, if that were possible, it would be great for attractions. Yeah. 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 Do you, do you say with the, with the ballet? I mean, obviously that was more a trad doco uh, production, but in terms of shooting the stage production, did you have any more access to that than, than with Semele or um, all these? No. Actually, well, no, we didn't. We um, basically, we shot, um, I wanted to get some tap in the wings so that we could get a different angle on the dancers than the standard. How'd that go? <laughs> um, well, I had to do it in a dress rehearsal yeah. because I wasn't, uh, for health and safety reasons, able to have a camera operator yeah. on the gimbal, like, so moving around um, in the wings for a main performance. Yes, yeah. um, too much risk involved in that. Um, but I'm super glad I did it. Um, so that a little bit of smoke and mirrors of production because then I put into cut that, mm. that material with, with the like with the main performance. Yeah, there's a real pace sideways, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the minute you take the audience somewhere that they're not used to being, yeah, yeah. the minute you give them a privileged um, piece of a uh, privileged view or privileged insight. Then that's kind of special, and I guess that's what I try to do a lot of the time. Yeah. Do something right. Yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah, there's lots of there. Are, there are tricks you can do to do that. You know, like because I've got luxury of editing afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with audio. Actually, you can intercut. Um, audio recordings. Um, it was interesting though, when similarly, we did a dry run audio record on the dress rehearsal because uh, we wanted to make sure everything was working <laughs> uh, primarily. Um, but for a couple of instances, we did actually uh, intercut the um, audio from that dress rehearsal night into the main performance. Um, but you could hear that difference in the ambience because the dress rehearsal was just a very small audience and the difference in, in the venue to yeah. just the ambience is incredible. Yeah. So there are um, lots of uh, lots of things that you might not necessarily even think about if, um, from a from a live performance point of view um, that can impact on the production um, uh, I'm talking to New Zealand Opera about possibly filming their up coming production of Morpheus. Uh, and that is going to be a uh, it's going to be dance, a big dance element to that opera as well as um, obviously opera. And I'm interested to see how um, 
the dance is going to affect the audio caption, how how much it's going to impact on the soundtrack. The breathing, the footfall, yeah. um, all those sorts of things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's definitely really interesting. Yeah. Okay, I've got a question. Yeah, Catherine's got a question. I have a relay question. Um, I read overseas that um, the wigs and the makeup departments of some of the other companies that were trying to film to, to broadcast, um, the budgets had tripled because you had to use uh, film makeup rather than theatrical makeup. Yeah, the question from Catherine was about having to up quality of, of uh, costume hair and makeup for uh, television coverage. And it was a point I was going to make that it's something that, that we discovered in the television world and, and in the film has always been known in the film world is, is the higher resolution of uh, HD, particularly in 4K, 2K, 4K uh, production to the requirement of the fine detail and down to, um, I know talking to some of the makeup artists for, and this is for news where you're dealing with very close up faces, is that they can't use brushes to apply makeup, they have to use uh, airbrushing um, because you can see the lines. And so that would apply across costume, across wigs, across sets where, you know, the old five sets of uh, cut legs and drapes for Gazelle uh, are not going to cut it for a, for a telly show because they've been around the world one too many times and are too, too tatty on, on, um, on a high definition production. And again, you can, I've seen it on a couple of the cinema shows of looking at National Theatre and, and those guys when you look at it and go, hmm, they just missed that with that. You know, the fine painting in the back of a set or the, uh, they didn't quite pick that up. And so those are the things that as a, as a production practitioner, you need to be aware of the fact that uh, the video or film eye is very, very intrusive and very uh, searching in depth. That said, um, a lot of modern cameras where they are large frame sensors uh, work on a very shallow depth of field, which can be advantageous again for, um, for the isolation where you want to pick up a particular element of show and isolate it. You can do it by the focus or the framing. Um, and quite often these days it's done by the focus. Um, but by the contrary, if you then want the whole depth in a wide shot, you may need to consider bringing the light levels up mm. to allow that to happen to gain a great depth of field. <coughs> and again, this depends on the, the, the equipment that you're using to capture the, uh, the show. And that's where a DP like Simon comes in because he's got those things in his head. And the understanding of, of the cinematic way that a show is going to look. So you're talking about having the, the foreground and focus and the background slightly out of focus. Yeah. So you've got that look and focus on yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's, it's very much a thing these days um, of that show depth of field. Mm -hmm. And fully focused from one to the other. Yeah. Which is something that we did in similar, but um, and it's, it's, it's another way of directing the viewer yeah. that, you, that you cannot do in a live yeah. environment. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's that's the television film medium. That's that's how it's done. It's how we how we manipulate it by the director. And so sort of actually, the live so the so the film filming of it, whatever it's for, it actually can, it can sort of be its own thing as well. That's what um, people who have seen similar have kind of realised that it also it, it takes a live show. But potentially you can well, it becomes a new thing as well because you've got mm. those abilities to direct um yeah. direct the viewer yeah. and choose yeah. what you show, choose which part of that stage you show. Yeah. And you, you, you need it, you know, without being too bleeding obvious, you need a director who understands that. Mm -hmm. 
uh, unfortunately, some some plays were thrown directors who were who were there to shoot coverage of a of a show, but not necessarily with an understanding of the finer points of the show, and and miss those those points. It's all about the story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Story. You know, whatever, whatever we're yeah. doing, whether uh, you know whether it is a film show or a, a live show, it's about the story. But if we at the end of the night, uh, the audience doesn't go away believing what they've seen, then we've failed. Yes. Uh, you know, in the film film production sense, it's bums on seats. That's the measure of, of the success of a show. And I guess in a live show, it's the same thing. In fact, if the bums on seats, then it's it's uh, it's not there. Yeah, it's awesome. well, we started so, our ratings now. <laughs> in the ideal world, when should the production start talking to the film here? Half an hour before they thought about it. <laughs> as early as possible. The, the production should talk to the film world, or vice versa, the business company, the, the film and television world, uh, or streaming world. Yeah. Um, the other way, you know, as, as soon as possible. So there's a big planning phase on it, so yeah, yeah right, right on early. Because you make decisions in the production phase based on it. Yeah. And should it be one big production meeting that includes all the film elements, or should it be one group of people just dealing with the film elements and another with the, the stage elements? I have to make a rule, but I'd say much smaller than that. There's got to be a lot of crossover points too between the lighting people, the stage management, yes. uh, front of house, where you want to come in and you know you want to you want to rip. Um, you know, a dozen seats out of the first three rows totally. in yes. the house, and and unfortunately, yeah. the king and queen are coming. Take over the opera box. Take take over the boxes. The lighting the lighting guys want uh, three rows at the back, and soundies want the same three rows. And um, and suddenly, you know, the fifteen hundred seat house is down to a thousand seats. So you need a production manager. <laughs> yeah, yeah a good, a good production manager with a foot in both camps. Yeah. Is, is, is invaluable and someone who understands. Well, uh, be nice. <laughs> Again, no, it's controlled by budget. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there's that's that's always the, the big handbrake on a lot of things. So, I think that thing comes down to relationships, like building relationships with the stage manager, the um, the technical manager, for example, whoever's in control of the house. Um, all like. The lighting director, all those things are critical. Yeah, there are a lot of conversations, a lot of conversations. Um, one thing I do is um, the camera operators who are going to work on the show, yeah. I'm um, always budget for them to be able to come and watch the guest oh, cool. So that they've, um, they've got a level of familiarity with the show, which just means they're not coming to it cold. And yeah. I think that really um, is worth, it's worth the with the budget. And you're also giving the cameraman on side, our camera people on yes, side. Yes. By yeah. giving them the prep time. Yeah. Yeah. The buyer. Yeah. 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 That's important. And I think that's across the medium. And even if you're doing a television show, that the same thing would apply so that the, the operators are going in with their eyes open and, and, and what to expect. Um, you know, I think we're quite lucky on the, on the, um, lighting and, and camera and the sensitivity of, of the device that we're using has become uh, pretty extraordinary and and the processing uh, you know I know from my point of view having done the uh, uh, dawn service for Anzac Day for the last 10 years you know we we run the cameras with at least 12 dB of gain which in the old days you would never have got away with because this is uh, whoever in, on the end of a translator in TRO wouldn't have seen anything because of the noise. Now we can do that. We can go and, and I think Simon got a clip to show that probably a fair extreme of that. And, and I think and looking at the opera, I can see some certain advantages in there of yeah. the, the, the dynamic, the dynamic range of the the imaging systems we've got uh, to 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 pick up. Uh, 
you know, typically these days, uh, some of the area cameras are up to 14 stops mm. range. Wow. So that means from black to white, you've got 14 F stops of range, which is extraordinary. Uh, it's not as good as the human eye, and that's that's what we've got to remember, or what you have to remember, is that you're doing it for the human eye the whole time. Yeah. We're doing it with an electronic eye, uh, which is a lot less forgiving than the human eye. There's a media server here. We've got a dodgy <laughs> media server in here, yeah, yeah which yeah, is very often full. The other thing is, the camera, and, um, you know, this is getting um, up on my pay rate in terms of technical knowledge, but, um, you know, we've, I've had issues with banding in the light, with filming yeah. lighting, various yeah. lighting. Um, and then in um, filming the ballet, the piano, for example, there was a massive um, backdrop which had video projected onto it. And then we had to finally calibrate the frame rate of that video yeah. so that it wasn't going to just scroll constantly with what yeah. we were filming. So there are all sorts of technical considerations that um, might not be obvious. At first That's blush. important, I think, too. With the crossovers of all these technologies that, that you know live production is using so much more video content yeah. LED electronic LED content, content. Yeah. being projection being lead screens being <clears throat> um, led lights and all of those are about the quality of the technology that you're using I mean, the panning that you saw you know i remember in the very early days of, of um one of my cameraman colleagues rang me he said oh, i've been out shooting rock quest around the schools and i can't use any of it because it's it's all full of banding. And I said, well, the reason is they're using cheap LEDs with a, with a low PWM rate. And I'm sorry, there is nothing you can do. You are stitched. And so there's those sort of questions which you, as a, as a producer, I am a lighting person, so I'm as a lighting person. And we go into a event and you go, okay, so how good are your LED parts? How good are you? The technology that you're wanting to use on this, this show because we need to have the, to not have that problem and like you say with a projector you need to think about gene locking them to some sort of uh, uh, system so that it's all there together yes uh, tests tests, tests. yeah a test and if, in doubt, thing, if, if in doubt test mm -hmm. and test again mm -hmm. um and i was just going to make a comment about color temperature um, you know, theatre has traditionally been 3200 Kelvin looking around this room. Yep. You know, we've been heating up its bits of tungsten and using them to make light. We're not doing that anymore. We're taking LEDs, we're taking discharge sources. And quite often, um, cameras have shifted their sensitivity into the blue end of the spectrum, into the daylight mm. spectrum. And so if you go in with a, with a fully lit tungsten rig, and throw a daylight balance camera, it's going to look horrific. Okay, switch it onto mm. onto onto tungsten. It'll it'll be okay, but it's still not native to that camera. So again, we we collectively need to work together to say, okay, we want this daylight balance mm. uh, using a black magic camera, or uh, which is a native 5600K mm. camera, or we're using a, a, a full blown area of so which doesn't care what it is. We've got a lot more daylight sources available now, but yes, yeah, exactly. I started as all times. But then you get into a lighting rig and a lot of moving lights, all daylight oh, sources. No. So we have to decide between the lighting designer, the, the technical directors, um, and also the, the vision operators. And if you've got an OB truck, you've got people constantly running the cameras. You need to, to to be kind to them. You need to stabilize your light level at a, a color and an intensity so that the guys on the camera controls of the truck are not hunting all over the place. And, and probably one of the greatest examples I've seen of this is the DVD, remember those, uh, of Pink Floyd Pulse concert in 1994, going back into the dark ages. But the guys who were driving vision on that were extraordinary because the light levels were from, you know, one foot candle to a thousand foot candles and they didn't touch the knobs. And there were bits of that DVD were all white. Yeah, there right. is nothing there. But then it comes back down again and it's there. And so 
those guys must have been cheering me here, but fortunately they sat and left the, uh, the vision control where they needed to be. So those are the communication things that too. You need to warn those guys to go, hey, this is going to go over the top. If you can, leave it. Well, if you're outdoors and your show starts before dark, oh, yeah. it'll be in daylight. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you've, you've got no choice. Everything has to be daylight correct. Yeah. Hello. 20 minutes away. Hello. 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 And Simon and Chris for what that was amazing. Um, general housekeeping, the next uh, session is at 1.20 in Stream A. It is Michael Braithwaite, who is the creative director for um, the Edinburgh Tattoo. Um, some more uh, housekeeping. The trade show passport is running online. Uh, you can see links everywhere, I'm sure, <laughs> including on the website to the PDF, which will let you find um, scavenger hunt thing, go check out their websites, go support those those um, those exhibitors and then you can enter in for the amazing prizes. Um, again, we want to thank the executive, especially the conference committee um, and all of the speakers, including these wonderful ones for the time they've given and their flexibility on all the reschedule. The trade show exhibitors, especially because, you know, half of them have got their stuff still on trucks. So I'd just like to um, mention them. Aspiring Safety, Piesco Limited, Jans New Zealand, John Herber, Kinderdine Entertainment Lighting, LS Group, MDR Sound and Lighting, Metro Productions, Scenic Solutions, Showquip, Show Technology, Stage Mark Limited, Better Light and ULA Group. Thank you so much to them. Everybody, please go check out the passports. And again, thank you to the suppliers who are supporting the physical operates down in the line, production, transport, grouse, metro, sugar assistance, the fire, fox club, southern cross, strong back crewing, and higher master. Thank you so much. Happy to have from Auckland. <laughs>